Oh, the weather is fine today. Uh, welcome to Forecasting with Friends, everybody. I'm Chief Meteorologist Mike Yuskovitz. I'm, I'm friendless here in the studio today, but that's why I appreciate you joining me here for Forecasting with Friends. Uh, if you're new here, uh, this is our Monday through Friday, um, 11 a.m. weather show that we do, uh, me and JD and Allison, with an occasional hopefully, you know, appearance from Ramesha, who, by the way, you need to follow on social media. You're not going to believe what Ramesha had. The, the talents, <laughs> I mean, we know her as a meteorologist and a weather forecaster and all of that good stuff, but you should see what else she can do. I mean, the, the dancing, the roller skating, the ice skating, this, the cheerleading, the, it's, you have to follow her on social media. So she's on TikTok and she's on uh, Instagram. But I digress. So as far as the weather today, I really hope you enjoyed it. I mean, it was amazing out there this morning. We had, it's hard to believe, but if you do the math, it's true. We had a 50 degree drop in temperatures from Tuesday afternoon down to this morning. We made it into the upper 90s Tuesday afternoon and into the upper 40s this morning. In fact, some locations actually got down into the low 40s and possibly upper 30s. So let's get to it. I want to sort of start with the headline, which is that we just got an update this morning on the drought situation. You know, you've probably noticed it has been dry around here lately. Maybe the grass in your front yard is a bit crunchy, maybe very crunchy. Well, we are now in a moderate drought. Now this drought monitor uh, comes from the US Department of Agriculture, as well as some universities around the country, including University of Nebraska, uh, and they compile this map based on a lot of different factors, not just recent rainfall, but things like soil moisture and things like that. So we are now classified as being in a moderate drought. Now remember, it was only, you know, in recent memory that it rained constantly, right? Almost the whole summer. Well, now we've slipped into a drought and it doesn't look like it's going to be getting any better quickly uh, because we don't have that much significant rain on the way. As far as the most severe drought taking place across the state of Texas, it is out there in the far western portion of the state in the Big Bend region and also um, just that area to the west of Austin and San Antonio. That one's been under a drought for a good you know, couple of years actually, so really been wanting for rain there and not going to get any rain today. It is nice out there right now. We have sunshine. It's 67 degrees here at 1102 in Houston. The wind is coming in from the east. That's a change because yesterday it was coming in from the north and northeast. Now from the east, eventually it'll return out of the southeast and that'll bring back more humidity. But for right now, the humidity is still very low. Galveston, you guys are at 72 right now with sunshine. Tomball is 66 and Sugarland is 68. And I think we're probably on track to head into the upper 70s uh, across the area for high temperatures later on today. Still pretty cool off toward the northeast, where those of you watching us from around Cleveland and Cold Spring are still in the low 60s, still hanging around the low 60s in Huntsville, desp uh, despite the sunshine. Uh, but here in Houston and most of the surrounding suburbs, we're in the middle and upper 60s right now. But you know, the day is young. We still have quite a ways to go as far as our warm up. Here's our exclusive Fox model showing the uh, day's weather. Notice just a little bit of high cloud cover will be possible uh, moving across the area as we head into uh, overnight and into tomorrow, but otherwise not that much going on. Of course, the biggest, uh, you know, weather related item that's still in everybody's mind, the after effects of a one two punch of both Hurricane Helene and Milton. Now they have come and gone, but bouncing back from those storms is going to end up taking months, probably years for some of the communities that were impacted. And many folks there obviously still dealing with things like flooding that's ongoing in Florida uh, and in North Carolina. Fox News correspondent Dana Marie McNichol reporting from Asheville, North Carolina. We never thought anything like this would ever happen in this neighborhood. Nearly a week after Milton made landfall as a Category 3 hurricane, dozens of homes in Pasco County, Florida remain boarded up with sandbags out front. Slow receding floodwaters delaying recovery efforts, which some residents say will also be a community effort. We will all be working together to, you know, tear all of this stuff out um, because even with the insurance money that they get, they're not going to be able to afford to build back. But state officials say recovery is happening. A massive debris removal project is underway in hard hit areas. Power has also been restored to millions of homes and businesses. Gas stations have reopened and some schools are back in session. 
Progress also being made in North Carolina, where many still are struggling to bounce back after Hurricane Helene. We've just had a huge outpouring of, of volunteers. We've had the U.S. Army in here. Nice. Um, it's just tremendous to see all of the people that are willing to help. But officials warn rebuilding won't be easy. It will likely be costly and take months. On Wednesday, the White House announced it's already approved more than $1.8 billion in recovery aid for communities hit hard by both Milton and Helene. And more could be coming. As the president has said, we are in this for the long haul, and we will be there as long as it takes. Today, the White House is urging Congress to pass additional funding for recovery efforts. In Asheville, I'm Dana Marie McNichol, Fox News. Well, you just heard some of the big numbers um, that uh, Dana Marie was talking about, you know, coming from the government to help folks. But we're learning that the overall damage from both Milton and Helene could rival some other historic storms. Experts say the costs for each one could hit $50 billion. Now, before Helene and Milton, there were only eight storms that reached that $50 billion in damage mark, including Sandy, so-called Superstorm Sandy, and then, of course, Hurricane Harvey, Hurricane Katrina. Economists say many victims will likely experience financial hardships as 95% of those impacted by Helene did not have storm insurance. Well, the White House says more funding is on the way for communities hit hard by those hurricanes. Uh, they've approved nearly $2 billion in recovery aid, but even that is not going to help anything really quickly. Uh, it is a massive project to remove debris. As you see here, a lot of people are just doing it the, on their own uh, because there's nobody else around to do it. Um, they do have electricity back in a lot of locations. In North Carolina, volunteers and even the U.S. military soldiers are working to clear the roads, provide supplies to residents in need. All right, back to Florida, something you may not have thought about. Orange farmers are feeling the impacts of Hurricane Milton. The storm went right over Polk County. That's like southwest Florida, which is the biggest orange producing county in the state of Florida. With production impacted, prices for things like orange juice could rise across the country. This comes after the USDA and said that orange production for the year would in would decrease, excuse me, by more than 15%. So a decrease in supply will probably mean an increase in price. Okay, back to our local hurricane issues. You now have more time to apply for financial help if you suffer damage from Hurricane Barrel. Now renters, homeowners, and small businesses have another 60 days to apply for help from FEMA. The original deadline was last Thursday, but FEMA will request an um, they are going to ask for an explanation if you're late with your application and you just tell them why you were late. Uh, but they are accepting those late applications until December the 9th. So to apply, you can call the FEMA hotline. It's there on your screen. I'm going to put my glasses on here to make sure I get it right. That is 1-800-621-3362. That's 800-621-3362. You can also find this on our uh, Fox 26 Houston website. You can also visit one of their damage recovery centers or I'm sure look them up on the web. All right, with the cooler temperatures out there today, you might need something to keep you warm. We were talking this morning about a, a light jacket, but how about a very comfy fleece pullover, one that will cost you a thousand bucks. Yeah, it looks like any normal fleece pullover you'd see in an outdoor store. But these jackets are from French label Rier. They're the, well, somebody says they're the must have item this season. Fleece is now going couture, as they say. Luxury stores in New York City are having trouble keeping these things in stock. Who can afford this? Uh, they cost $1,000. But these pullovers are winning over earth conscious fast fashionistas because they're 100% wool, free from any synthetic material. I thought we already had wool clothes. I don't know. Uh, industry watchers say the fleece also allows customers to experience what is called the quiet luxury trend. That's where people can show off their wealth in, in an understated way, kind of like this person right there. Good news for the rest of us. You could still buy those affordable fleece, fleece pullovers from you know, Old Navy for 19 bucks. $1,000. All right. A new fashion trend is blowing up literally blowing up air conditioned clothes. 
We could hit 90 next week again. Air conditioned clothes are hitting the runway, spearheaded by a Japan based designer. The inflatable clothes are are ridiculous, yes, and they're meant to keep you cool during sweltering temperatures with the Texas heat, you know, making a comeback here pretty soon. Uh, you know, maybe some people will buy this. The collection of fan powered garb is currently priced again at more than a thousand dollars. So, you know, you spend a thousand on the fleece, you drop another grand on this ridiculous. <laughs> Somebody is buying it, everybody. If they weren't buying it, th these things wouldn't exist. So, uh, there, there goes that college savings account right there. All right, you know, we experience a lot of weather extremes here in the Houston area, including cold weather and icy conditions sometimes during the wintertime. Of course, tropical systems and heat during the summer. And so a lot of us may not know what to do to keep our cars prepared for that. So John Dawson has an in-depth discussion with an expert right after this. All right, welcome back to Forecasting with Friends. Of course, I'm meteorologist John Dawson. We have a special guest. This is Mark Beckett. He's with Jiffy Lube, a regional manager here. And kind of a small world. I thought we'd be talking with somebody from, uh, you know, up in the Dallas area or maybe even over in Atlanta or something. But but you're in Huntsville, so Texas. So you're even a part of the Fox 26 viewing area. So, Mark, glad you're here. Uh, we're going to be talking about a lot of just preparedness in our vehicles, whether it be hurricane season or just emergency preparedness in general and just kind of being on the, uh, the the ready for things. So, Mark, tell us a little bit about yourself and, of course, uh, your role there at Jiffy Lube, and then we'll dive into some more specifics about getting our vehicles ready. Oh, I started working with Jiffy Lube 21 years ago um, as a store manager, uh, worked up to a district manager and now a regional manager where I'm over districts. Um, and... Uh, it's been a really fun ride the whole way. I've learned a lot about cars. I've learned how to give a lot of advice to friends and family members on taking care of their cars to help save them money. Um, as far as Jiffy Lube, we've been uh, specializing in automotive preventative maintenance for the last 45 years. Uh, in the greater Houston area, we've got 61 locations. Um, we offer fast, convenient services ranging anywhere from our Jiffy Lube signature service oil change to brakes, tires, filters, fluids, pretty much anything that a manufacturer would recommend be either serviced or replaced on a regular basis. And uh, something a lot of viewers might not know is that uh, we actually offer the customers now the choice to stay in their vehicle while we do the oil change or they can wait in our lobby. So that kind of adds a little extra comfort option for a lot of them. Yeah, okay, great. I, I was unaware of that. I'm glad you mentioned that. And it's always nice to have, I like to try to do what I can as far as the maintenance on my vehicle goes, but there's sometimes I just run out of time or maybe it's a little bit more. So it's nice to know that there are, there are places easy to get to that can help with that maintenance because that's going to be a part of our discussion i'm sure just in keeping your car ready uh for whatever you know the season might bring but i'm going to start with because the hurricane uh preparedness kits or hurricane kits are always something that i talk about um and so that's kind of what i want to start with because i know for your vehicle it's also a pretty good idea to keep some things in your vehicle maybe even have an actual kit that's just kind of for emergencies in general. What do y'all recommend for something like that? Some of the basics that you want to make sure you have is jumper cables in case you're ever stranded on the side of the road. Um, if you can, not a bad idea to have a jump box in case there's not a car there to use the jumper cables. Um, but a lot of the times when you are broke down, you're going to be on the side of the road. So the first thing you want to think about is safety. So it's nice to have a flare to kind of show other drivers that somebody's there, something happens. Um, but you also don't know what the weather's going to be like. So it's good to have a poncho. So if you are having to be outside of your car in the rain, at least you can stay dry and be able to figure out what you need to do. Um, flashlight's always going to be important too, because at night it's very hard to see. Um, but, um, uh, uh, either some kind of a tire gauge to check your tires or even better, a tire inflator that you can plug in to be able to air up your tires should you need it. But assuming 
nobody ever knows how long you're going to be stuck on the side of the road. So you want to make sure you have some of the necessities like blanket, water, food to snack on, something and, until help can get there if it's something that you can't fix yourself. So yeah, I'm are- glad you really brought that up there at the end, Mark, about some of those just basic things like some food and water and a blanket. Um, that's uh, something that I really, you know, always encourage uh, to keep in your vehicle, especially some water. Maybe you don't even have to necessarily drink the water, but man, my hands get filthy anytime I do anything on the side of the road with a vehicle. Uh, and you could either just even wash up a little bit, I think is sometimes a, a good idea with that. So, and more of the general, you know, sort of scheme of, of car maintenance in general, what's just a few key points that we really need to kind of look at regularly with our cars? So the main thing is going to be your oil level. Um, If you look at most owner's manuals, it recommends that you check the oil level when you get gas, which is pretty frequently for a lot of people. But you can cause a lot of damage to your engine if your oil level's low and you don't get that uh, fixed. And, you know, at Jiffy Lube, one of the things we do is we offer all of our customers that get an oil change a top off policy where you can bring the vehicle back to us anytime in between oil changes. And if anything's low fluid wise, we fill it up for free, including the oil up to two quarts. So there's an extra value, but some of the other things to check on a regular basis is you want to make sure you're going to be able to see. So checking your wiper blades and those are really easy to do. You're just feeling the rubber, seeing if it's brittle, seeing if it's torn, and then just spray your spray your windshield, use your wipers and see if they're streaking. If it's streaking, it's usually time to go ahead and change them. Um, tires are very important because that can affect the safety of while you're driving the vehicle. If you have low tread on a tire, that can dramatically affect the distance that it takes to stop should you need to stop really fast. So one of the things that you can do to check your tires, if you don't have a gauge to do it, is you can actually use a penny or a quarter. So if you turn the coin upside down and you put the head first into your your tire tread and you can see the top of Lincoln's head on a penny, then your tires are actually below 230 seconds of tread left which would fail a state inspection, but also increases the chances of you hydroplaning in water or just being able to stop in the correct distance on dry pavement. So a penny, if you can see the top of the head, will tell you the tires really need to be replaced now. On a quarter, if they're barely touching the head, that's when you want to start thinking about getting new tires before it gets too low. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was just going to say, that's great information. Just sort of have some practical uh, ways to check that tire, um, you know, uh, tread like that, because I don't want the bare minimum. I don't want what the, the state says is like dangerous. I want to I want to stop that way before uh, we get to what the state says uh, is dangerous on there. Uh, did I cut you off? Was there something else you want to say about specific no. items? The only the only other thing I would I would say is uh, the warning lights. You always want to check your warning lights on the dash because there's a lot of lights that could come on and it's important to know what they mean. So if you don't know what some of these lights mean, look in your owner's manual and they'll describe, you know, you have your check engine light. You have a, a tire pressure light that comes on when the tire pressure drops, but that light can either come on and stay on or it can come on and flash. And those mean two different things. If it stays on, your tire's low. If it's flashing, that actually means you have a problem with the sensor that's reading the tire pressure. Okay, good. Uh, that's good information. I have, have had a little bit of both of those that's happened to me, you know, over time uh, where the sensor went out at one point or whether the tire itself was low. So that's a great uh, thing to remind us about is that this is the time of year here where we're starting to get cooler weather and, you know, there'll, there'll be that one cold front, maybe the most recent cold front didn't get you, but there'll be that other front that's a little stronger, maybe in December that, that makes that tire pressure light come on a little bit. So um, what's what's the recommendations as far as, do you need to try to prevent that from happening? Or do you just say, okay, there's my, there's my heads up. Now I'm going to address it. Yeah, there's really not much you can do. When you notice a, a drastic drop in the temperature, it's natural that the 
tire light's going to come on because the, the cold air affects the pressure. The best thing you can do is just fill it when you see it. And uh, again, if that's something you need help with, you can bring it by Jiffy Lube and we'll be more than happy to assist you with that. Okay. Let's sort of transition a little bit of out of hurricane season and out of warmer weather. And now we're getting into colder weather. We're, we're not in winter yet, especially what we do here in Southeast Texas for winter. But tell us a little bit about what we need to be thinking as we, we do get into those colder months and just our vehicles uh, in general. Yeah, so the main thing is going to be just keeping up with your maintenance. Um, you want to follow your manufacturer's recommendations as far as when certain fluids should be changed out. Um, you want to pay special attention to your antifreeze level to make sure nothing's going to freeze. If we know we have a freeze coming, then you might want to add a additive to your washer fluid so that your plastic reservoir doesn't break when it uh, when it freezes. Um, it's not a bad idea to keep some kind of an ice scraper, even though we live in Texas and Houston and it doesn't freeze much. Sometimes when you need to get in your car and go in the morning, it can take a few minutes to thaw that windshield out. Um, and the other thing with the extreme temperatures, whether it's the heat or the cold, is having your battery checked on a regular basis too. Um, the the extreme heat, the extreme cold can really put a toll on those batteries and they always seem to go out at the wrong time. I, I tell you what, too, and um, depending on vehicles nowadays, uh, it seems like they're making those batteries harder and harder to access. Um, it used to be I was changing my own battery, you know, and checking my battery and all that kind of stuff. But nowadays, it seems like I might need to bring my vehicle to you uh, to look at it because it's just a lot more effort. Yeah. And that's a service that we can perform. We check it for free. And if it needs to be replaced, then we can do that for you also. All right. So I'm really thankful for your time. Obviously, we've been talking with you and we've been referencing Jiffy Lube. Um, and we're thankful that you're here uh, as one of their representatives sharing with us a bigger topic just in general. Uh, people can, there are other places to go to. And the most important thing I think is to get those uh, those important maintenances taken care of. Uh, but also, I appreciate your insight as far as uh, what we need to keep in our car, kind of those emergency kits for our car. And uh, I, again, I, I appreciate your time with us today, Mark. Oh, well, thank you for having me. All right. We'll be back with more forecasting with friends coming up after this break. All right, time for a look at what I think is a pretty amazing looking seven day forecast. We're talking about high temperatures today in the middle and upper 70s with very low humidity in place. I think that qualifies for putting the word great on the seven day with an exclamation tonight back down to the 50s. And so it's going to feel fantastic about 81 for a high tomorrow. Very, very slight chance of a coastal sprinkle. Notice a gradual warm up as we head into next week. Hey, stick around here on our digital streaming platforms. Join me and Alon Dillard for Fox 26 News at noon.